Hey guys, welcome back to another video. This is Motivation for Young Christians. Welcome back, welcome back. Welcome back to another episode of Bible Study. This is Bible Study episode 57. Today we're going to be diving into Acts chapter 2, verses 42 to 47. We're going to be talking about that believers form a community. We'll be having an opening prayer by me. We're going to be led by Brother Nate today, and the closing prayer will be done by Brother Nate. If you can, guys, please bow your heads and close your eyes. Heavenly Father, we thank you, we praise you, we worship you, God. We thank you for this day that you've made. I rejoice in the God. We pray as now as we come together to discuss your word, God. I pray that iron will be able to sharpen the iron, God. We pray that we'll be able to understand your word, God. We pray that we'll be able to give each other different perspective and different understanding of the reading of the word today, God. A different perspective, God. We just pray that you continue to be with us each and every day, God. We pray that you reveal your information on to us, God. In Jesus' name, holy name, amen. Okay, good morning, everybody. I'm going to read this morning from New Living Translation. All the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to sharing in meals, including the Lord's Supper and to prayer. A deep sense of awe came over them all, and the apostles performed many signs and wonders. And all the believers met together in one place and shared everything they had. They sold their property and their possessions and shared the money with those in need. They worshiped together at the temple each day, met in homes for the Lord's Supper, and shared their meals with great joy and generosity, all while praising God and enjoying the goodwill of all the people. And each day the Lord added to the fellowship those who are being saved. Are there anything that pops out or jumps out at you right away concerning these verses? And these verses, once I first read it, to me what pops out the most is that they all came together and were sharing their their different like possession and just making sure that everybody um there was fed. And that's what stand out to me the most. And then also in verses 45 where it says that they sold their property and possession and shared the money with those with those in need. Cause that's that's like that's a that's like a such a special act. Cause it's not just like giving what you have. They're like, I know what I have. Let's let's sell this, get the money and then share it. Uh, among the people, I think that, that's what stand out the most for me for today. Okay. Uh, is there anything else that, like, it might have jumped out to you regarding the aspect of community? The aspect of community? Yes. Think about it, yeah. Um, the fact that they, they came together and helped everybody, because that's, that's what the community is supposed to do. When some are in need and some are in trouble, the community is there to help them and build them up. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Take a verse by verse breakdown. One thing that leaped out to me, and I think that's the most important thing. Post the move of Pentecost, they were the spirit, that same spirit that fell on them also led them to be together. So it shows the organizational power of the Holy Spirit, I believe. And also, this is what you call the beautiful beginning of the Christian, modern day Christian church. The, that verse 42 stands out to me. It said, all the believers devoted themselves. So they all had that same one accord beyond the anticipation of the Holy Spirit. There was a unity in devoting themselves. And they devoted themselves to the following things. The Bible says the apostles' teaching, fellowship, sharing in meals, and to prayer. You see the importance of each of those things, even in today's church. Because if you don't have good teaching, good fellowship, and a good prayer life for the church, it doesn't grow. So this, in essence, is basically the mechanism to make sure that the church is always moving. Mm -hmm. You see that? So community is not just a coming together, but something has to be happening. Because a lot of people are just satisfied with going to church, but they're not continuing to, to develop their personal faith and in the communal aspect of their faith. 
And that's where 43 makes sense, which said, and a deep sense of awe came over them all. Because all of them were participating in it. That makes sense? It, it does. And we're reading the scriptures prior to that. This section makes more sense. We're reading like how in the beginning of chapter two, how the spirit came among them. They were speaking in tongues. Then the Jews came over here like, wait, they speak in my language. Then, then um, was I think Peter was that Peter? I mean, Peter came in and then was telling them, no, 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 no. The Holy Spirit is working. The Holy Spirit is working um through them and just having that different relation to understand that this was a process. I think that's, a, that's another key thing that I point out. This was a process. This wasn't something that just happened. This was this was a process from them receiving the Holy Spirit, and after they received him, they worked in him. I think that's an important thing that we could point out, that once you receive the Holy Spirit, you got to work with the Holy Spirit. Because it's a whole process. Very good. Very good. Because that's exactly what that is. So um, it's not enough that he came on them. He demonstrated that he was living in them by how they began, because this is actually a fulfillment of John 13 also. Uh, and some portions of 15 as well, rather, where it said, they'll know that you're my disciples if you have love one for another, right? Remember, we were talking about that in John a while back. So um, the key to community growing is the love of God being at the core and that love of God comes from the power of the Holy Spirit, right? So remember, for a church to grow that has sound teaching, because Christ's message is what is what we're supposed to be ever learning, ever growing in, right? Um, fellowships, having open and honest relationship with one another as God's people. And you're gonna see that, why that's important as you continue to read the New Testament. Um, the breaking of bread, which we really translate as communion um, and prayer. So it's not just enough to come together, but it's also just building that community spiritually through communion. Um, I just, just something that jumped out to me. But when you remember Jesus said, as often as you do it, you do show his death his burial and his resurrection. The Holy Spirit reminding them of that importance in the context of community because the message could get lost. You know what I'm saying? Because a timeless message like that needs some good foundations that help it to stay true. Because remember, this is a part of the mandate for them. There's also a mandate for them to spread this gospel, to spread this good news, right? So quintessentially, that is the key to, to what made this thing work, you know? And the same Holy Spirit drove them, as it says in verse 45, um, they were selling their possessions, right? They were willing to sell their possessions. You think that's something that's missing today? Yes, because in today's where we're all focused on us and what we have when you also, got to, you, also, you also have to think like we don't own nothing if, if we're being fully honest. The earth is the Lord and everything in it, meaning that everything in it and everything that, I mean, the earth itself and everything in it belongs to him. So we technically do not own anything. So this is not even our stuff. And we, we get so fascinated with the materialistic stuff and everything in general that we're not willing to give it up. Also good observation. Um, that thing that, that, that what you're really hunting on that some more, that, that, that they shared, not only shared everything they had, but they were willing to sell some things, but not only just selling, but they also shared the profit of it. So they were being resourceful. So a good body of, there's, there's so much things that we can pull from the original church that helps make sense in a modern context, right? 
Are we willing to go above and beyond for being resourceful for our brother and sister? You see, they were willing to do that. I'm not talking about in an irresponsible way, obviously. But, um, their devotion, it started from their devotion to the Lord and their commitment to growing the, the community of faith. You see, anything else, especially now moving into uh, 46 and 47, Yes, um, 46, we said they worshiped together at the temple each day, met in their homes for the Lord's Supper, and shared their meal with great joy and generosity. That is so, like, amazing. Not only they worshiped together at the temple, but they also met in their homes for the Lord's Supper and then to share a meal and just enjoy each other. And we need that as like a community to be able to come together like that. Because it's nowhere we're going to prosper. There's nowhere that we're going to continue to grow if we're not together. Because the division kills everything. Mm -hmm. Once there's division, it's hard to try to move forward. Mm. That's why um, I know I know more like nowadays, you know, that's why like back in like um, Martin Luther King era, that's why it was so many progress. Because everybody was together, they was they they were all marching together. You had people coming from this state, that state, other people funding for people to go, stuff like that. That um unselfishness, that togetherness, led to us gaining our right to vote. Led to us telling people like we our voice is important, we belong here. So like that that um coming together is so important, and all so on the Christ side, we need each other because every. Both you and me know this is um this is a very difficult journey. And if you don't have nobody, ah uh, ooh, I don't I don't know how you gonna I don't I really do not know how you gonna be able to like do this journey. Like me myself, I I, I my mentors that I got around me, I need them. It's not like I want I need them because for this journey you need to have this that person that um guys with you because you did a lot of things that you may not understand and then you have the people there to help you so I just like the fact that they were together and just have that unselfishness like you were decide you were coming to the house we, we're going to share food we're going to be able to come together so the unselfishness and coming together is what point out the most to me um, in 46 nice nice They took that. They took the ideals with them everywhere they went. That's what made those outside of the faith be compelled. Because remember, it was their attitude also that they did this with joy and generosity. I love the emphasis there because you can do these things without joy and generosity. That's a good implication. Yes, you take you with you, the attitude in which you do things. What makes a body, a community grow and be well is basically the attitude, the posture of the heart of the people. Because if that's not the case, then you can have a miserable community that's not growing, that's not thriving, because they're not doing it with a sincere motive of genuine joy and generosity. And in verse 47, it said, all while praising God and enjoying the goodwill of the people. This is all happening simultaneously. All of these things have to be happening. These are the key ingredients because the end of it says, and each day the Lord added to the fellowship, those that were being saved. So I simply tell me that all while you're doing what you're doing and you're doing it with a genuine attitude or doing it with a willing heart doing it with a joyful heart the Lord was giving more and more increase mm -hmm. this is beyond the 3,000 that initially got converted on the Pentecost festival 
it shows that the work wasn't just a one day thing, but as they grew in these elements of love and fellowship and prayer and communion, there was increase happening in the body. See? Also on the point um, with, that you mentioned, we're doing it and have the, um, the mindset. Cause you can do good things and have a terrible mindset. So it's important that if you're gonna do the Lord's work or just do any good thing in general, have a mindset for it. Cause if you're not, it's not, if you don't have the right mindset for it, what you're doing is just gonna be it. Like not being authentic. That's what I'm trying to, there you you're, go. Not being, you're not being authentic. That's the way I was trying to use. And authenticity help cause the body to grow. You see? Um, another version says that they did it with generous hearts. So it shows that motive matters to the growth of the body of Christ. A lot of times people will do things in church or do things in the body not from a genuine heart or a generous heart. Sometimes they're doing it to lull you over. Sometimes they may do things because you live long enough, you understand there's a wide ranging of different mo motives, why people are driven to do some of the things that they're driven to do or not. So that's why it's very important to really pay attention to that. You know, the increase did come from authenticity, you know, um, the increase came also, for, yeah, just, just a generous heart. Their results weren't limited because their heart was always in the right place. See? So these are important takeaways for, um, really for the listener and seeing the fellowship, the growing fellowship of the believer. They devoted themselves they were devoted, they continually devoted to the teaching of Jesus Christ by the apostles' teaching because that, that's how they got Christ's message. Fellowship, growing in community with one another. That's another part that goes, that does, that, that, that I believe we don't talk about too much. How do, what does growing in community look like? Well, this shows it. See what I mean? prayer, and the communion. So you have four fundamental pillars that this text is showing that's going to be paramount for the growth of the body of Christ. <clears throat> all while having genuine, authentic, um, not all while having generous hearts, being willing to go and above to see the growth of a person, seeing the growth of the body, seeing the growth of the community. This is what keeps your generation when it's done authentically. This is what's gonna drive them and continues to drive them to want to serve the Lord because all of those things matter, you see? Any other thing that just stands out to you with that? Okay, I just wanted, to, I, I had a thought about it. Um, especially about that growing in community aspect. Anything else leaping out to you when it comes to the communal aspect of church and the body of Christ? And for anybody yes. else? Yes, because it takes a community to raise a child. You always hear that saying. And then it goes for the same thing in the Christian community. It takes a community to be able to raise a child up in, in the word. And w once the community is not there, it's very hard for that child to be able to serve the Lord, um, live his life in the way of the Lord, and be interested in the Lord. Because we see um, that a lot of the disconnect with the youth come from that community not being there, that community not being there to truly understand them, be there for them, like support them in the ways that they need of, not in the way that you think they need it, but in the way that they need it. And we we need to have that we need to have that back. Like um in these verses, how uh, they came together and was helping each other to the fullest. We we need that um community aspect. 
to be able to um, serve the Lord more and just have a better understanding of each other and where each other need help. Oh, really good, good thoughts. Good thoughts. Oh, that's a good thoughts. Any other ideas? Any other concepts? Anything that uh, uh, thoughts anybody else? Um, oh, tell them you got anything? But I think you guys said everything for the most part. But my takeaway from that is that this this section of the Book of Acts is what was paramount for the church to grow, and is still the key ingredients for the church to grow today. That's my biggest takeaway. Um, I think in the 21st century, the body of Christ is still look, is looking back and trying to reach back and connect the bridge and to connect the dots with what made the first century church work. And those key things, again, I think if you, if you sustain these, if you take these things, the teaching, make sure your house and your community, your church is a place of good teaching fellowship growing in community not just growing in sex or cliques you know they grew all together they grew all together spiritually and they grew together to impact the world around them that's what people are yearning for a place where they can feel safe safe spaces small cell groups in can embody what was happening in the text the overall community aspect um, loving one another, knowing each other's needs, serving together, growing together, loving together. Communion, um, something that goes underrated because I think that simple action is a miraculous demonstration that we serve the Lord and we love Jesus and we follow him. And prayer, the prayer life of the body of Christ is what's going to be key to help growing the community of faith. This is what helps bring people and continue to help people to um, come together because coming together is just more than gathering together. All right? Coming together is just more than gathering on a social level because you can do that anywhere. But the body of Christ had intention, you see? And that's what I believe made them grow post the festival of Pentecost and continue will help them to continue to grow. There's a lot of questions about how do we resolve to grow in community? What does growing in community look like? How does that translate? I guess that'll be my question to bounce off to you before we close the room. How does that translate? How will we make that translate continually for the generation now and those who follow? How would that translate? I'll say it translates by this. First, you gotta understand what is growing in the community. Because before you go into something or do something, you got to understand what it is and how you're able to do it. And in chapter two of Acts, give us a, a really good example of it. So first, you got to go with the understanding. Then, in order, and then um, we're going more into the translating part. You got to um, be able to connect with the you, connect with the you on um, a personal level. Uh, get to know them, get to know who they are, get to know what they like, what they don't like. And then this is where you bring in the Christian aspect. Okay, I'm going to be able to help you in this part. We're going to be along in this journey. I'm going to be there for you. And we have, we got Jave, we got Gio, we got Nate, we got John, and we're all going to be here, here for you through this journey. And that's how the translation of the community is going because now you have a full set of people that's there because we already got past the understanding part, the knowing you part. Now we're going to get into the translation part. Okay. Alton, you got anything? Well, I would say it's kind of hard for us, like, all grow, like, now, like, the majority to grow spiritually and the community are growing, like, Christianity because, like, most of our influence and stuff, like, we probably get from, like, the roads of those among us, right? But like the church people, like we only step once a week versus like if we had like the people at the schools, like the teachers on our side too, that also like apply the same practice that we do, the church do like five days a week. Like you see probably more progress in the community versus just when you come on maybe Fridays and Saturdays, the youth leaders try to like motivate us and help us become better people. 
it'll be a lot easier that way. Don't cry, see mm-hmm. growing coming like just in positive like let's be in a better place than we was yesterday. Just progression. Good point, sirs, right there. Because what it what it sounds like you're saying is it has to be more than having events. It's doing life, and that's the, the I guess say a, a microcosm to help really advance the body. Doing life together, not just having the events. Sunday morning church or Friday youth service, respectfully, it's just really events. But if you're not doing life together, meaning rubbing shoulders, praying together, serving together, that aspect does can, can get lost. Now, I'm not saying, you know, we do everything every time all together. I know it's in some cases that's geographically impossible, but it's about having the heart of b- being together and serving together, loving together and growing together. Um, that aspect of doing life together, I believe that's what helped them to grow. So, yeah, that is paramount. That's how it can translate today, what happened all the way in the, in the, in the first century. It can translate to today. So um, there's a lot more thoughts on it, but I think because we really did a great job of really emphasizing, I don't know if any there's any more questions or any more thoughts, but I believe that um, you guys have grasped and have whet the appetite for conversation and deeper reading and also deeper reflection. Does your house embody that community um, that's talked about in Acts 2 verses 42 to 47? Is there growth happening? Is there consistent growth happening? Because what basically is being shown here, this is the blueprint the Holy Spirit gives, right? And the body's executing it. So there's not only spiritual growth, but there's also numerical growth. You know, that's something to consider. Is that something happening? I know that um, the last year and change have been challenging, but the call never changed. The call of God, the commission never changed. You know, are we influencing and impacting the lives of those around us, causing them to want to grow and to follow Jesus, regardless of age, regardless of generation? Because I think the beauty of this is that the body of Christ is not just one age group or just one philosophy. I believe that children are being saved Children are being filled with the Holy Spirit just as adults were. So um, that, that I believe, making that home base of community and having a good um, <coughs> atmosphere for growth and generosity is what helped multiply the body of Christ. Especially because the Bible said it added daily. The church was growing daily. Maybe not every time 3,000 like how it did on the day of Pentecost, but they were growing. But I'm sure there's some other moments. So take that with you. Something to think about, you know. Um, is the teaching solid? Is the prayer life of the church solid? Um, those are good reflection questions. Is the fellowship solid? You see, is uh, do we observe the things like Lord's Supper? Do we have fellowship with, with each other? This also translates, um, fun fact, we'll talk about agape meals. It was a very, it was a theme-based meal. I don't know if you heard of it. Agape meals was like a love fellow, like a love um, and fellowship-based meal with the believers. So something to consider, you know, does that happen? Is that being demonstrated? So those are things to think about, things to ponder on, things to pray about for your local church. If those things aren't happening or there's some places or aspects that's missing for those that are listening, you also have the power to change that in the place of prayer, personal prayer. So I want to encourage you with that. All right. So all hearts and minds are cleared. Everybody feel good. Is there any other thing that you want to bring to the table, um, Ezra, um, before we um, pray? That was an amazing point with the reflection question. Because you also got to bring it back to self. Like, am I, am I practicing what I'm preaching? So I think um, that's that's the only point I had. Just always bring it back to self. It's important to practice what you preach. Not just preach what you want to practice, but practice it yourself. Good stuff. You're right. For it to prosper in the communal aspect, 
everybody individually has to be on the same page. So like I said, that's why I believe if you don't think that you're experiencing that in your home church or the local church where you might be serving or worshiping, you also have the power to change that, you know? Um, get a group of people, pray, believe God together. Um, prayer still changes hearts, minds, things, and circumstances. Fellowship, grow together, all right? Um, if you don't feel that that's happening, the body of Christ is large. It's not just relegated to just one local church or two local churches. It's a large body. The kingdom is large. The kingdom world is large. So be encouraged. There's a place and space for you to grow and to become all that God's called you to be. Um, with that in mind, I'll just, um, just say a brief prayer. Father, thank you for the work of the early church. I thank you for their resolve and their commitment to follow you and their devotion to you. Also their devotion to the pillars that would help them to grow. The teaching of the apostles, sound teaching, uh, fellowship with one another, not only just fellowship with you, but fellowship with one another. Observing the miracle and the holy ordinance of uh, communion and also prayer life. Uh, I pray that these things will be seen and demonstrated in each of our local bodies where we serve and beyond. And for everybody that's listening, let that be demonstrated in the homes and in the lives and in the churches where they're living and they're serving, Father God, so that they can continue to grow in grace and in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ, as Peter admonishes us to. I also pray, Lord, that you'd speak to our hearts. I pray that our giving will not come from just like uh, the Pharisees did uh, when Jesus had rebuked uh, the, 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 their heart posture. They were given out of abundance. They, they were given because they said, oh, I have extra. I can just do that. But let us have the generosity and the, um, the tenacity like the woman that did, the, the widow that had the, uh, that little might. Um, Jesus said that she outgave them because her heart was in the right place. I pray that our heart will be in the right place in our giving and our living and in our serving for one another, and our care for one another, so that what you said, Lord Jesus, in the book of John will be demonstrated in our lives, in our church families, in all the communities, and all the places that you called us to be, where it said, by this shall all men know you are my disciples, if you have love one towards another, bring us back to a place of willingness to have that uh, selfless love, um, one for another, uh, the Bible talks about in 1 John 3.16 about that love that we should have for one another so to the point where we'd be willing to um, lay down our lives for one another. Um, that level of love, that maturity, Lord, help us to ever grow and continue to grow to that kind of place as your uh, word lets us know. Also, I pray today in Jesus' name that as each church, each body, um, as every youth that's listening, and also every adult and everybody that will listen to this, let uh, a personal consecration and devotion to you be a catalyst, be that catalyst that is needed to spark change, to spark revival, refreshing and renewal in each heart, each mind, uh, and each soul that's in the room. For those that may come in that don't know you in the pardon of their sins, I pray that watching the video today will, will cause them to desire uh, to want to know you and to grow in you. Father, place them into a house that will help them to continue to grow in their faith once they receive you as their personal Savior and Lord. I pray for uh, this continued movement. I also pray that, Lord Jesus, that you will help us uh, to continue to live the lives that are pleasing to you and also to help us to continue to expand our reach. Uh, I pray for Ezra and I pray that... Uh, genuine, authentic community of growth in Jesus Christ, the Lord, will happen in his life for his day, continue to do it in his life. Thank you for those you brought into his life. And I pray that as they're pouring into that, he'll continue to be a resource of light and, and um, uh, in every aspect in the name of Jesus, so you be glorified. Uh, and we thank you for this room and this opportunity. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Oh, such an amazing prayer, brother Nate. Thank you so much for that. 
this was the end of, of the video. Next, we will be moving on into chapter three. We just finished our branch print wrapping up chapter two of Acts. Um, Acts is just such an amazing scripture full with a bunch of different understanding, different revelation. And I'm glad that we were able to go through this. If you guys haven't already liked the video, subscribe if you're new, please turn on your post notification. That way anytime I upload YouTube with any notification, this is motivation for young Christian. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. <music>